Profitability Ratios Problem 1. A corporation has 2,000 shares, 10% preferred stock of $60 par preferred stock, and 6,000 shares of common stock outstanding. The net income for the year is $270,000. Calculate earnings per share. Earnings per share is a student's favorite calculation. It's, it, it can be challenging, but students love to calculate this. This is part of the profitability analysis. Profitability analysis evaluates the ability of a company to generate future earnings. This ability depends on the relationship between the company's operating results and the assets a company has available for use. So the relationship between income statement and balance sheet items are used to evaluate profitability. Now there are a lot of different formulas and ratios when it comes to analyzing profitability. There's ratio of net sales to assets, rate earned on total assets, rate earned on stock or as equity, rate earned on common stock or as equity. You can break it up by common preferred stock. You can just do so much. There's earnings per share, price to earnings ratio, dividend yield, dividend per share of stock. There's just so many, so many out there. Now we're focusing specifically on earnings per share. The question's asking specifically per, for earnings per share, and you notice that it does mention preferred stock. So remember the rule. When it comes to a corporation, every corporation must have at least common stock. If there's preferred stock, there's always common stock. So that means that because we're told there's preferred stock and common stock, we it, there, there could be earnings per share calculations for both preferred stock and common stock or together. When you're just told earnings per share, that's assumed to mean just common. Just common. So common EPS is what it's asking for here. Sometimes it will say specifically it wants common. Sometimes it will say specifically preferred. If you're not given that, then that is earnings per share for common for common. Now the formula to calculate this is going to be net income NI minus preferred dividends. The dividends will go to preferred stock because remember we're doing this specifically for common stock. Again, we're not told so we assume common stock and we divide that by the number of shares of common stock. The number of shares of common stock and I'm going to note that it has to be weighted in some cases. So I'm going to put weighted in parentheses, weighted number of shares of common stock. And we'll look at the facts to see what specifically applies here. Now, again, students love this because they understand what's going on here. Again, it's a profitability ratio. It's the idea of um, how much basically the retained earnings goes to the common shareholders and the retained earnings, right? That net income number minus the preferred dividends because preferred dividends don't affect the common shareholders. That's the ability to get paid out through dividends in the future. So that will give you the dividends that common shareholders could get if the company was to liquidate this year, which that's good for, for the, for the common shareholders because they could get that money. So that's the idea is earnings per share, earnings per share common, earnings per share of preferred here again, doesn't say, so it's common. So let's go ahead and let's calculate this. We're told the net income for the year is $270,000. So we can start there. Just start simple net income minus preferred dividends. Now we do not have the amount of preferred dividends in total, but we do know there are 2000 shares of preferred stock. We know that it's a 10% preferred stock. I'm sorry, 10% preferred stock at $60 par. So we can calculate this. We can calculate the preferred dividend, the preferred dividend. We can calculate this. What we're going to do is we're going to take the 2000 shares of stock, I'm just going to do it in order. 2,000 shares of preferred stock, right? Times 10% because it's pref it's 10% preferred times $60 par. And when you multiply that out, you're going to get $12,000. So this is the dividend each year if a dividend's paid out, which this year we have $20,000 in net income. So we calculate this, the dividend for preferred. And you're wondering, well, nothing says that a dividend was paid. And you're right. But we have to calculate this because there is preferred stock out there. And if we're doing this calculation of, huh, what would the dividend be? We have to subtract it away. So we're going to take away this $12,000. We're going to take away the $12,000 and we're going to get in the numerator. Let's bring this over. We're going to get $258,000. $258,000 in the numerator. And we're going to divide that by the number of shares outstanding, which is all we're given here. So we can't really do a weight. There's no weightage because there's only one thing, 6,000 shares of common stock outstanding. Now, when it comes to these calculations, you always, always, always use outstanding shares. So if I gave you authorized and issued, ignore it. It's always going to be outstanding. So 6,000 shares of common stock. When we calculate this, 
we get $43 per share. And that is the earnings per share. It's $43 per share. And that's what we do. That's how we calculate this. So again, go through this in each piece. It's a student's favorite. Students love calculating earnings per share. Can get difficult depending on the way it's structured, but it's net income minus preferred dividends if you're focusing on the common, divided by the number of shares of common stock. Outstanding. I'll put that in there. See, write down. I know I mentioned it already. Let's put that down. Number of shares of common outstanding. And it's a weighted. If there's a weighted calculation in there, keep that in mind. And that gives us our calculation, which we've done. Okay. So again, put the denominator here, keep everything um, in good order so you have it for your notes. And that's how you do this calculation.